The following podcast contains explicit language. Hey folks, this is Paul with the Diesel Performance Podcast. And with me as always, Danny Voss. Danny, so glad to have you here. Um, want to get started just by saying thank you. Thank you to all of our listeners. Thank you for all of the positive feedback we've been receiving. We love what we're seeing on iTunes, getting all of the reviews there. Please keep them coming. Um, we've been sharing this all across Facebook. Danny and I have tried to get into as many Facebook groups as possible. Uh, we were getting messages back on the Facebook page itself. Lots of positive feedback. I want to say thank you to that. The ideas you guys have had for some new episodes we're currently working on. Uh, we want to bring people on. We want to get messages from you. If you got a truck out there and you want us to talk about it, if you have a question out there and you want us to answer it, we will do the research. We will bring on the experts. We will get you the information that you want. So, Danny, today I'm going to be interviewing Chris Emke of Calibrated Power. Can you guess what I'm going to talk to him about? Talking Chris, you know, talking to Chris about diesel stuff. Let me guess, Cummins. Oh, you know he's a cum dog. Absolutely. Yeah, so cum dog Chris is going to come on the show. Uh, I'm going to get a chance to really go through and rake him over the coals on first gen, second gen, third gen. I'm going to talk to him about turbos, injectors, transmissions, motors, supporting mods. What else do you want me to ask him, Danny? Ask him why Cummins. Why? I like it. I'll, I'll, I'm going to challenge him to it. Sure. Why a Cummins over a Power Stroke or a Duramax? Mm -hmm. I dig it. Awesome. Well, with that being said, uh, we're not going to make you guys wait too long. We're going to dive right into it. All right. Chris Emke, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, not a problem. It's my pleasure. Uh, Chris has been one of our resident Cummins experts. I think that's fair to say. Uh, Chris, you have quite a bit of experience through a wide range of Cummins performance. Give me a little bit of your background. What kind of trucks have you owned? What have you done with them? Uh, why should I care what you have to say? <laughs> you never do care what I say. That's but, uh, <laughs> you know, I came from, you know, import cars, stuff like that, moved into the diesels. My first diesel was a 96 Ford with a power stroke in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I try not to remind myself of that. But uh, <laughs> then I got into the Dodges. At the time, I didn't have a lot of cash, so I budget bought a truck. It was a 1990 12 valve Cummins. Uh, one thing led to another, started tinkering with that and taught myself a lot. Uh, moved from that to a 92. So same platform, but uh, Dodge introduced an intercooler and an overdrive gear. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, getting fancy. High tech. Yeah, it was uh, high tech for those days, I suppose. Um, had a little fun with that. Ended up upgrading to uh, a 2001, so that's when you get into the 24 valve motors uh, with the VP44 electronically controlled rotary pump. Right. Um, ran that for a while, then went back and put a 97 12 valve P pump motor in that truck to uh, end out my 2001 truck era. Well, that just that makes sense because why would you want all that technology? Right? Yeah, I mean it was a. Uh, it was done on a budget at the time. So, you know, the 01 I had big plans for. The motor ended up uh, having other ideas of its own um, <laughs> that ended up cracking the head uh, due to, you know, maybe the way it was used prior. I'm not exactly sure. No, but definitely it, not you beating the shit out of it. <laughs> that is not possible. Um, <laughs> you know, and then, uh, you know, the last truck that I had, I had an 07, you know, 5.9 Cummins, Common Rail. Um, that we tinkered with here at the shop. And, uh, you know, I ended up letting go of that truck, making some good power. It was a respectful uh, power number for what the truck was. Yeah, what did it turn? Uh, that truck ended up making 625 horsepower out of a very small drop-in 64-millimeter style turbocharger. Nice. Um, you know, had some good fueling behind it. The truck ran very well. Um, you know, you can still tow with it. You can still daily drive it. Still got 18, 19 miles to the gallon. Um, and it, it's very reliable. And the, the new owner of that truck has put thousands of miles on the truck already. Yeah. So, you know, it makes me feel good that, uh, you know, the finished product made someone else happy. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so definitely quite a bit of experience. Sounds like you started out in the older stuff and, you know, as you grew up and the budget got bigger, you got into bigger and better and newer <laughs> I don't Shit, know. I think that's pretty fair to say. I don't know if the budget got bigger or I just got dumber with my money. <laughs> okay, like, let's just be serious here. Um, it really doesn't matter. Other than the price point of the truck itself, guys can sit there and argue that, oh, the older trucks are cheaper, oh, the newer trucks are cheaper. They all have their pros and cons. At the end of the day, the truck's probably going to run you 
maybe not dollar for dollar the same, but you're going to be in the same price range. With yeah, it's, everything it's the same said, ballpark. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, if you want to get to X amount of horsepower, exactly. it cost X amount of money. Exactly. I mean, you take the purchase price of the truck aside, a transmission's still going to run you anywhere from four to $8,000, you know, depending right. on what the build's going to be. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's an older transmission and a 94 12 valve, uh, a 99 24 valve, or even a 2006, you know, common rail motor. All the transmissions, the, the 47 RE, the 48 RE, they're very similar. And a lot of the transmission components that go in there are the same. Right. So, um, you know, it's... I mean, the they're all shit, right? Yeah. It's, a, it's a Cummins I, Auto Trans. I, I do love any of the manuals. I mean, there's not really a bad and that, that's a manual good point. transmission setup there's a lot of Cummins. There's but, a lot of budget there. Yeah. When you talk to these guys like, hey, you know, I want to do a budget build. Find a five or a six speed manual trans truck. Yeah. You're going to be money ahead. Yeah, it might not go the fastest in a quarter mile, but from a roll, you know what? I mean, what's it really going to be? You're, I mean, they're a lot of fun on the street. I mean, there's are. no question. And, and if you sled pull, it makes more sense to get into a manual, anyways. Yeah, I mean, the, the 2001 that I had, that was originally a five speed manual truck. Yeah. Um, again, I was on a budget. You know, I paid five grand for a clean truck down in Tennessee, it had decent miles on it. Brought it back home, started tinkering with it, you know, did a clutch, did injectors, did a turbo, did a tuner. Um, and then it was, well, you know, now I have to shift. You know, that's my next limiting factor. <laughs> well, now I want to swap an automatic. Right. Well, okay, I'm going to swap an automatic. And then it's, well, the injection pumps pump the limitation because the, the rotary VP style pump can only flow so much fuel. Right. So a lot of guys throw a mechanical P pump on a 24 valve engine from the older 12 valve motors. Well, I said, screw it. I'll put a whole 12-valve motor in the truck and make the swap very simple. <laughs> so that's, you know, kind of how that went into play. But, yeah, the the budget per what build you're trying to do is going to play a big effect on, you know, any of the platforms, I guess, that you would work with. Right. Okay. Dollar per horsepower is pretty, pretty equal across the years. It's more just, you know, your pick of poison. The Diesel Performance Podcast will return in just a moment, but first we want to talk about our sponsor, Calibrated Power Solutions of Marengo, Illinois. Calibrated Power Solutions is the home of DuramaxTuner.com and developers of performance engine and transmission calibrations for a wide variety of diesel powertrains, including, of course, the Duramax, Cummins, John Deere, Jeep, TDI, and many more. For more information and the best customer service in the industry, check out CalibratedPower.com or call 815-568-7920. That's 815-568-7920. Why don't you give me a rundown here? Let's uh, just, I, I don't want to get too deep into the stage one stuff. So if I'm talking about a first gen Cummins, what should I do first? What, what's my stage one? Where can I take it? To? So, I mean, you want to keep in mind that this truck made 160 horsepower from the factory. So not the 325 horse that the common rail engines have and the older 24 valve era or the, I mean, what are the new six sevens? I mean, they're almost 400 horse. Yeah, 340. So, 340, okay. So yeah, that, but that's rear wheel. That's right. not what they claim at the current. Yeah, 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 that's fair. So, that's fair. you know, there's there's definitely a significant power difference there. Um, you know, stage one, you, you, you're a new owner of a used 1991 Dodge Cummins. <laughs> um, you know, of course, it's going to need a trans or a clutch if it's a manual or an automatic. Right. So you have to put money aside for that, and that would depend on what you're looking to do. Um, you know, you do a you do a you know a, a turbocharger upgrade. You can do a set of injectors. You can do some free simple pump modifications. Right. And I mean, at most you're going to maybe see 400 horsepower. Okay. And that's where the injection pump is limiting you. Really. Um, you know, you have a million mile motor in in a truck that will last <laughs> you maybe 100,000 miles till it rots out. Um, you know, but they definitely depowered those trucks and. Uh, they prove themselves, you know, when you see these trucks with 800, 700,000 miles plus on them. Yeah, I mean, so. it's really not a joke. We really have seen trucks rot out while it's, I mean, while it's damn near still running. Oh, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Owen, I, I, this is somebody we both know here that's local to right. us, a uh, shop tech over at Calibrated literally had the truck collapsing. I mean, the bed almost touching the cab. I mean, let, let's go a step further than Still that. Still runs the, fine. The floor was rotted out. He had bungee cords holding the passenger door on oh, yeah. because the hinges were rusted off. The bed was sagging. You are correct on that. He had probably like 300,000 miles on the truck at the time. The motor never skipped a beat. That was probably one of the most mechanically sound engines I've ever heard. Totally agree. 
And if you were blind, you would have been like, oh, my God, it's a brand new truck. But <laughs> you, you look at the body and you're like, I would not get in that. No. And I mean, I've heard guys say, I'm not getting in that death trap. And there that, was a reason for them absolutely. saying that. Absolutely. Because you could fall through the floor. Uh, like, I'm <laughs> the door could fall off. I mean, like, any of those our are lis- real problems. Any of our listeners that have seen a picture of Owen, they know he's a he's a, a tall, lanky kid. Uh, he doesn't weigh much. There's not much you know density there to him. But I'm still surprised that he hadn't fallen through the bed, you know, through the floorboard. <laughs> So first gens, we're we're talking stage one is pretty simple. Sounds like it's it's reasonably affordable. I mean, especially if you're in a manual with a, a newer clutch when you bought it, right. you're really ten steps ahead of the game if you don't got to dump a bunch I mean, of money into the trans. It's one of those things. You are correct, but you have to look at the purchase price of the truck. So like what we were saying, yeah, all the trucks are going to be kind of around the same price. For 400 horsepower on one of those old trucks, it's going to be very cheap. Right. You're going to pay a little bit more for a truck if you find a nice one. Guys really want an arm and a leg right now, but you know, you're gonna, you're talking maybe three or four hundred dollars for a set of injectors, maybe a thousand dollars on a turbo. Um, the pump modifications are all free, pretty much at that point. Right. Um, you know, a clutch or a trans, depending, and you know, uh, you're a lift pump. You know, so there's gonna be something there as far as like a fast that we're used to on the newer style trucks, or there's um, a, a conversion kit that you can do. So the newer 12 valve motors, 94 to 98, you can take the the piston style lift pump and convert that onto the old trucks. Oh, nice. So, you know, if, if you want to do it on a budget, you can be crafty with it at the same time. Right. All right. What if I want to skip stage two and I just want to go balls out with the first gen? What's your favorite setup? I mean, uh, most guys, they do the, you know, P-pump conversion. So they take a, a, a 12 valve injection pump out of a 94 to 98 um and those pumps can range anywhere from two thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars you know really depending (laughs) on how much fuel you're looking to make uh, or you know throw to the motor to the injector so um you know you're you're talking a built motor you know you're talking uh big fuel out of an expensive injection pump uh big injectors twin turbos you know a transmission, of course, to handle that. You know, now you're getting into the same price range of making, uh, let's say, a thousand horsepower, as it would potentially to do it on a newer common rail truck. Okay. So, you know, there's really not a, a a savings there. You know, you're not doing that on a budget. Right. Well, no thousand horsepower build is. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. How different are the modifications as I start to move into a second gen? Like, if I just want to do a stage one on a second gen, what am I messing with? So um, second gen as opposed to the first gen, you know, let's say we're shooting for that 400 horsepower again. Right. Um, Again, you know, a small injector upgrade, whether the transmission needs to be addressed, automatic or manual, um, a turbocharger upgrade. Um, You know, at that point, there's some free pump modifications that you can do to turn up the P-pump and you could get to 400 horse pretty, pretty quickly. Um, you could take that same 12 valve engine and you could crank it up to 500 horse pretty quickly with basically maybe a little bit bigger injector or a little bit bigger turbocharger with that stock pump. You know, there's a lot you can do to grow into it. What's a good turbo on a second gen that you would recommend for somebody who wants to drive on the street, small pump mod, small injector mod, built trans, what are their options? What should they be looking for as they compare turbos? So with the 12 valves, you got to keep in mind there's not a lot of valves per cylinder. You have two, one intake, one exhaust. Um, so going into that, you're not going to beat compounds because you have that low end spool up. You're going to have the, the high end airflow from an atmospheric turbo. So a stock over like a whole set HT3B or even a small S400, maybe an S471, potentially an S475, um, that would get the job done with keeping, you know, sufficient airflow into the engine and keeping everything cool. Um, still be responsive off the line. A lot of guys say that you can put bigger S300 or even S400s on the truck. Uh, those guys are usually at the drag strip they're spraying nitrous into the motor to get that s400 to come to life at the line so it, it's not really practical for someone that's going to drive that truck on the day-to-day um yeah a single is definitely more of a, a budget route to go yeah you know you could buy a simple boxed s366 borg warner turbo and slap it on the truck but you're going to be smoking out intersections. You're not going to be happy with the lag the truck's not going to be responsive if you try towing with that truck absolutely forget about it really um it's it, it's not going to be tow user friendly yeah i mean compounds are something that i definitely think about when i think about towing or i think about um maybe like a balls out you know all out horsepower build right. when i'm thinking about stage one though i'm thinking about what's the what's the cheapest turbo i can put on 
to max out my stock pump and stock injectors? So, I mean, doing a smaller turbocharger, you're on a budget, okay? Yeah. That That's what you have to do. Going with like a 63 millimeter compressor wheel, maybe something in the 65 millimeter turbine with a tighter 12 millimeter, even a 14 centimeter exhaust housing, Okay, that's probably gonna get you there. Um, Realistically, a turbocharger that price is probably going to run you somewhere in the fifteen to eighteen hundred dollar range. Right, where you could pick up a, an HT three B whole set turbo in a compound kit. You could buy those used for five six hundred bucks online, and then Damn. you can you can get your own. You know, you, if if you're crafty, you can weld your own twin kit up. Um, but I mean, there's older twelve valve twin kit. You know, providers out there that will sell the piping for eleven or twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, that's so pretty cheap on a budget. For about two grand, you could have a twin kit. Right. So see that makes I guess that makes it a lot more appealing to get into it sooner because I know as we start to get into the newer models, like if we're talking about a twin kit on a third gen. Oh yeah. What am I looking at? I mean, you know, you want to jump up to the third gen truck. You know, now you're you're in a different price bracket. You know, you're are there deals out there? Sometimes depending right. on who you are, um, <laughs> but mainly you're talking a truck that. On a deal you're getting for fifteen grand, um, and you can pay upwards of thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars even still for a, a five-nine truck. Right. Um, when you're getting into the twin kits, I mean, they can be anywhere from twenty-eight hundred dollars all the way to four thousand dollars plus, and that all dictates what turbochargers you're looking to really run on the truck. So, if someone were to come to me and say, "Hey, this is what I want to do." You know, what's a twin kit going to cost me? Well, what are you doing with the truck? How are you using it? What's the power level? You know, what's the day-to-day -day usage? That's going to help have a better understanding of uh, how to recommend the turbochargers for that customer. Okay, okay. So so let's get back into, and I'm going to jump backwards here a little bit, but uh, as I jump back into the second gens, tell me if I'm sled pulling and that's all I do. Okay. What should I be considering for my you know, two, five or my all out class. Let's just say that I, I have a no limits, run what you brung all out class. And I'm a sled puller. I got a second gen. What would you recommend if there's no budget to be considered? Okay. So, you know, let's say uh, the favorite motor is going to be a 12 valve. I mean, that's really what is conquering even to this day, doing really well in, in your three O your unlimited class, uh, with some of the bigger companies in the country. Um, you know, starting off with a 12 valve motor, most guys would yank the 12 valve rods out, put Carrillo's in, you know, doing a fully built motor, doing, uh, Molly pistons with valve reliefs, running a really, uh, uh, unconventional cam than stock, I guess you would say, okay. where there's um, a deeper lobe. So you would have the, the valve going into the piston. So you'd have to cut out the, the piston uh, like a fly cut, they would okay. call it, yeah. so that the, the valves can potentially not hit the, the piston itself. Right. Um, when it comes to injectors, I mean, you're running a big, either a five hole or a six hole injector, um, generally like a six by 16 or a five by 18, something that's going to really flow the fuel that you need to make I mean, it's just pouring fuel it's in just, it. It's yeah, not even I mean, atomizing. It looks like point. a garden hose at that point. Right. It's huge. Even at idle, it's, it's smoking. It's hazing. It, it, it's going to be a mess. Right. It's not something you'd want to drive on the street. No, absolutely. Um, when it comes to a, a P pump, there's a few pumps that came from the factory over the course of 94 to 98. You had your 160 horsepower P pump. You had your 180 horsepower P pump. And you had your 215 horsepower P pump. Right. Um, most guys favor the 180 horsepower P pump over the rest of them. Um, just when you do the pump modifications, like your governor springs, your delivery valves, they seem to be reliable at that 5,000 RPM full fuel. Jesus. Uh, yes, I mean they, they do get serious. Um, then there's our there are some companies out there that will modify the plungers. So what what's actually the the internals of the pump? Right. Uh, 12 millimeter, you know, 12 millimeter P pump. There's 13 millimeters, 14 millimeters, and uh, from what I've been reading online, there's actually some bigger ones that are going to be available soon. Really. So I mean, when you start getting into 14 millimeter P pumps or 13 millimeter P pumps um, at their full potential of what they're able to flow fuel wise. I mean, you're talking 1500 horse, 2000 horsepower. Oh, easy. So, I mean, you're not going to beat the mechanical injection in the, the sled pull arena uh, as of right now. Right. So, um, and again, those pumps are going to range. I mean, you're going to pay for those pumps. I mean, it's so, to, to me, it always cracks me up when you talk to, to 12 valve guys. It's all about what size pump do you have? Oh, Turbos always always tend to run a second uh -huh. behind I mean, it. The 
the heart and soul of a 12 valve is the P pump. You know, it's basically a mini motor next to the engine itself, the way most guys look at it. Right. Um, you know, going back to the unlimited, you know, what are you doing sled pull wise? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're doing an unlimited class, you're going to run big triples, maybe S 500s, maybe big S 400s. You're going to do something like that. If you're in a two five or a two six or a three O class, then you're going to run an S 400 style turbocharger. That's going to meet the requirements for that division that you're going to be pulling in. Right. So most guys, they, they throw a ton of fuel at the truck, and then they pick the turbocharger according to whatever <laughs> class they're going to pull in. I have a thousand horsepower worth of fuel, eight hundred horsepower worth of turbo. That's and that's generally how it is. No matter uh, you know what shop you call or what build no, I, you're I looking mean, at. I mean, if I were to build a sled puller, I, I'd go fuel heavy. I'd rather have more fuel than air. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's uh, right. It's a no brainer. Yeah, and you have a lot of guys that uh, try to transfer that over into the street the street truck builds. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily <laughs> work out that well. So yeah, they they need to be a little bit more balanced. Okay, uh, so we've covered stage one and stage three for first gen and second gen. Now, if I'm looking at a third gen, I'm starting to get into common rail. Right. Right. Uh, I know I have a whole new slew of opportunities and a plethora of trucks that maybe aren't rotted out at this point. Uh, I agree with you 100%. Um, you know, if you were to have asked me a year or two ago, I would have been a diehard first gen, second gen fan. Right. After building the third gen, driving the third gen, tuning the third gen, um, I have a new love and a new respect for those trucks. Um, pretty simple to make power. Yeah, there's a couple components that cost a little bit more money. So, I mean, let's get into a stage one style build. Right. You bought the truck. You know, you're happy. You bought a, let's say, 150,000 mile uh, 2006 5.9 truck. Um, beautiful, rust free. Gets good fuel mileage. Drives nice. Uh, you got bit by the diesel bug. Your friend had one. You want to make some power. You could do a simple exhaust and intake and a EFI live tune on that truck and make 100 horsepower over stock without even batting an eye. Right. Generally, these trucks will baseline at about 300 rear wheel horse. So with just a tuner and an intake and an exhaust, we're making 400 horse. Which already is where you were at. With, yes, with, with injectors. Stage one. Term, yeah. I, I mean, that's a 400 horse first gen. I mean, that's that's like stage two, three, you know, right. like that's up there. That's so, pushing it. you know, you definitely are making that power with, you know, a little bit more money up front on the truck, a little less money in parts, and the truck's going to drive a heck of a lot nicer. You're still going to be able to tow with it every day. There's not a lot of modifications there, and it's not going to, you know, smoke out the intersection behind you. And the interiors, no, the interior is the exact same. Uh, but maybe <laughs> I mean, the honestly, seats are nicer. The, the yeah. seats are nicer. I wouldn't even go that far. I think the dash is a little nicer. The seats are about the same quality. That, that's just yeah. a personal preference. Yeah, I guess. Um, Wood grain plastic to just plastic, <laughs> right? I, I hear you. You're, you're not buying the truck for the truck you're buying the truck for the motor and the truck really comes along with the motor that's you talk you talk that to anyone truth of it. you talk to anyone with a dodge with a cummins diesel in it 10 out of 10 times they don't say yeah that's my dodge over there no right. they go that's my cummins over there <laughs> there's a reason for it there's a lot of reasons why guys debadge the dodge and put cummins and they run the big c's in the windows so Try it's to draw there. any attention you can away from that. Exactly. I got it. I got it. So <clears throat> then let's go into, you know, a stage two, because a stage two to me is kind of built trans, you know, medium, you know, like maybe a turbo upgrade, something like that. that. Yeah, that's what I would think. I mean, as you start to get into pumps and injectors, you jump a whole level of knowledge for your do it at home mechanic. You jump a whole level of budget. And of so like, that's where I feel like once we start messing with a common rail injection system and modifying that. To me, that is now a stage three. I, I agree with you 100%. So you bought that 2006 truck. You did tuning. You did intake and exhaust. You made four, cool 400 horse. You love it. Now you're bored. It's two weeks, three right. weeks. You know, <laughs> and you, you put it off for six months because the transmission gets expensive. Sure. Um, to build a 48 RE on the automatic or the six-speed manual that they had, you could do a clutch. Um, but a transmission, honestly going to run you anywhere from five to 10 grand. And it really depends on what the power level is. If you, Ooh. if you have that goal, I want a thousand horse. We, we hear about it a lot. I have a really close friend of mine who he had a stock trans truck and he told me, I'm going to build a thousand horse truck. I want a thousand horse trans. And he has lived behind every word of what he said. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's got, you know, dyno numbers and track numbers to prove it. Sure. So, um, you know, you want to establish a power number. What, what's that power number going to be? 
then you build the trans accordingly, whether it's a dual disc clutch for a manual or you know the modifications for an automatic. Right. Um, then we can have the truck retuned and we can make a real nice 500, 530 rear wheel horsepower. And now we're limited by the stock turbocharger. Okay. So now you just added another 130 rear wheel horsepower to your truck. It's a completely different animal at this point. Right. You know, you're taking on a lot of stuff on the street. You're having a lot of fun. Uh, depending on who did the tuning, the truck should run pretty clean, you know, smoke output wise. Yeah. So you're running under the radar, depending on, you know, the sound of the exhaust and all that fun stuff. Um, now you say that's not enough. You know, now I want more. <laughs> um, at that point, you know, a turbocharger upgrade is something that I recommend to a lot of guys. Um, you could do a small drop-in, like kind of like what I had on my 07. Yeah, that, um, that 64 was nice. Yeah, it was a 64-millimeter compressor wheel. It had a 65-millimeter turbine. Sounded like a little jet plane. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it really didn't drive any worse than stock. It, it spooled up really well. It managed EGTs when I had a trailer behind the truck. And it really really drove nicely. I mean, it, it, it did. And I, I did get a chance to get behind the wheel on that one. And uh, you couldn't tell the difference from stock unless you were running peak power. No, I and mean, that's, that's obviously what I want my yeah, charger to, exactly. to feel different. I don't want it to feel different down low. I don't want a ton of lag and have it come on like a freight train. No, not at all. I want it to be nice and smooth across the power band. So I hear you there. Yeah. I mean, you, you drive, you know, doing 50, 60 miles an hour, you get a couple pounds of boost, you know, you really get on it. There was no delay. I mean, the power was there and it was consistent. And that was when it was on stock injectors at that point, you right. know, so the truck really was responsive. Um, other supporting mods at that point, we're going to have to do a fuel system. So you're going to have to have a fast lift pump or of some sort, um, a, a lift pump of some sort, I should say. Right. Um, you know, and, and you would mount that on the frame rail, provide your injection pump or your CP3 with the extra fuel pressure that's needed to make that higher horsepower number. Yeah. Um, in a stock injector and a stock injection pump truck with a lift pump and a turbo and a built trans, you're going to be looking at roughly right around 600 horse. You know, so, I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. No, you know, I that, mean... It, that's a respectful number. The most fun you could have on the street with your clothes on, that's for sure. Yeah, and that's, like, considering the price of the truck, considering the price of the trans, considering the price of the turbo, that is, in my opinion, the most bang for your buck that you're going to get. Because the minute you start throwing more fuel at the truck, there are other supporting mods that need to be um, considered. Yeah, what else do I get into? As I start to get over that stock fuel system, so I what tell, am I going after? I tell guys, stock injector, stock pump, doesn't matter what turbos are on the truck, you're going to be fine with a stock long block. Um, the minute you do air and then you want to modify the fuel system, injectors and pump, there's some other things that come along with that. Head studs. Dun, valve, dun, dun. valve springs. <laughs> yep. Heavy duty push rods. Um, I recommend a coolant bypass system. So it really redirects the, the way the coolant flows, and it really gets into the back two cylinders, which are the most – they're one of the bigger failure points on a Cummins engine. Yeah, they're, they're uh, neglected by design. They are by, by design. So the rear two cylinders are what ends up getting hot and ends up uh, – uh, failing over time. Right. So it redirects the cooling system into the back of the block, helps equally cool the number five and six cylinder. It's a must over 600 horse in my opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, so guys already have, you know, let's say uh, 20, 25 grand into a $15,000 truck, let's say. Now you got to turn around and it's, you know, 500 for head studs. Now it's, you know, $300 for springs, $300, $400 for push rods, $400 for a coolant bypass. Um, but you still have to nail down the two big, big objects I would there. say that's all the cheap stuff, the right? The CP3 and the injectors. Yeah, you're two grand on a 10 mil, and then what injectors? I mean, 1800 uh, bucks. I mean, that's if you plus take... Plus or minus. That's if you honing. take your injectors, and they test, they test okay, and you have yeah. them honed. Yeah, that is um, true. So my big philosophy is buy injectors once, Rely on your tuner. Hopefully they're very reputable in the industry and they can work with whatever size injector you have within reason and they can dial back that injector for the given airflow that you have. And it gives you something that you can build off of down the road. Yeah. And that's not to say to be a dumbass. If you got a stock truck, don't go buy 100% overs and tell your tuner to dial it back. Exactly. You can't atomize the fuel Correct. when the holes are that big. So the fuel needs to be turned into vapor. Basically exactly. it gets sprayed into the air. Uh, when you get into these giant injectors and you don't have enough turbo or you don't have enough motor behind it, uh, you can't do anything with that. It's just wasted fuel. I agree with that. And, um, I mean, I've seen guys where they've went bigger than 100 overs. You know, I mean, a 100 over injector these days, um, 
Yeah, it's Seems middle me, of the road. It's middle of the road. I mean, I, yeah. there's guys with 300, 400, and 500 percent over injectors these days. I know we used to call hundred overs, and I date myself here, but I used to call hundred overs like only the most badass truck right. for random. Like right. if you were chasing a thousand, mm-hmm. and, and that was a time where people were chasing a thousand, yeah. not regularly hitting it and driving it on the street. Yeah. Uh, then you went with hundred overs. <laughs> Nowadays it seems like yeah, oh I got a turbo on it and a built trans, so I threw hundred overs in it, and I'm just waiting on a pump. Yeah, I mean hundred overs is um, just another lingo to be thrown around i feel in today's industry yeah when when guys are talking about horsepower oh i have a small turbo yeah i got 100 overs though guys figure it out (laughs) um you know uh, what kills me too is 100 overs and a stock injection pump yeah and then they wonder why the truck's not maintaining rail or or something along those lines so i always tell guys let's let's do a a combination that's going to work well with each other you know, sure. a proper combo. Yeah, match it. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, let's say you don't have money for both the injectors in the pump and the turbo. Well, let's always upgrade the air side before the fuel side because the the, the air is lacking on those motors than, than the fuel side would be. Right. Um, and then when it comes to the fuel stuff, you know, do you plan on doing more? Do you plan on changing out that turbo? Do you plan on doing twins? You know, now it really dictates what's the overall power number. You know, I would never sell someone or, or tell someone to buy 100% over injectors if their goal is 700 horse. Right. It just, it, it doesn't it make doesn't sense. It doesn't make sense. You yeah. know, if they said 8850, well, yeah, 100 overs are definitely going to be the route to go. Um, cutting back the pulse width and timing on that injector is going to help the the stock motor at this point live a longer life or any motor at that point live a longer life. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I think I start throwing up warning signs. You, you know, like if we're not in a built motor and you're realistic about what it's done. And, and when I say realistic, I guess I mean that you've been in a truck that has it. You, you know, I always I tell agree. guys, try to do your research, try to get out to some diesel events, try to get out and meet other people that have these right. modifications Correct. and get an idea of what it really feels like because it sounds really good. And then you get in it, and I, I've just seen too many guys be disappointed because they went too big of injector or they went too big of turbo and not enough injector. I feel Match your setup. I feel I can agree with you on a lot of different uh, levels there. Number one, guys that have a stock truck and then they go into, oh, I want a thousand horse. You know, they throw the thousand horse number out there. Yeah, bust out the checkbook. Exactly. And then drop it like, off and do it one time. Right. Then. It's like you, you didn't learn the stages. You know, you didn't take the truck to 400, 500, 600 horse. To me, that's the most fun. You get to learn <laughs> how the truck reacted at that given, you know, horsepower level with those modifications. Right. That's what I enjoy the most. That is true. Because I have been in thousand horsepower triple turbo duramaxes and i kind of drove them and was like this is awesome but useless <laughs> and that's exactly it you know you tell guy guys that you know you talk to oh i want a thousand horse i want a tow i want this i want that well let's dial back the horsepower number let, let's let's shoot for 800 horse yeah 800 horse can this day and age you can tow with it you can still daily drive it. Not that you would want to, but no, it is it, doable. It's not, it's not the ultimate tow rig and we it's just not. recently released the right. ultimate tow rig episode um it's not the ultimate tow rig, but you can it's set up an 800 horsepower truck to, to that can do tow those okay, workloads. right? But what you run into then is, oh, only 800 horse. <laughs> yeah, it's it's only 800 horse, man. You know, it, it's only 800 horse. Well, my buddy's got a six liter Ford, and and that thing makes 700 horse. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> you, you know, they're they're very far and few between. So. Um, between the bragging rights, you know, guys want to have that big horsepower number. Yeah. Without ever experiencing that on the street, you're not going to notice a difference, in my opinion, from an 800 horse truck versus an 1100 horse truck. No, I totally, I totally you, agree with not. you there. I totally. And as you get into the higher horsepower setups, you have to use a less streetable method to get there because it's now just about a peak. It's just about running at the of top course. end of the motor. So you lose a lot of that drivability. So like me, I'm a daily driver. I drive a very short trip, but I'm a daily driver. I still like to beat on my truck. You know, I still get after it. My foot's on the floor here and there. Um, I think that's okay, you know, but that that wouldn't be possible in a thousand horsepower truck because at that point beating on it is just putting me sideways. I'm I'm just I'm useless on the street. <laughs> it is it is useless. You are hundred yeah. percent so, right. So I think build the purpose. I think that's I a agree. fair statement to say when we're talking about diesels. Um Chris, I think we, we dove pretty deep into the third gens. Fourth gen, I'm dealing with emissions equipment. My life is over as we know it. I mean I don't agree. I, I really don't agree. Uh, I've had the luxury of driving a lot of emissions equipped fourth gen trucks. I've had the luxury of driving emission-deleted fourth-gen trucks. Um, 
my heart goes to the to the third gen five nine crowd. That's what I really prefer as of right this moment to, right. to build off of. Um, probably because the pocketbook won't allow me to buy a new fifteen, you know, uh, <laughs> six seven Cummins. Um, that, that's a tough pill to swallow, but. Yeah, I mean, let, let's dive in there. You buy a, a fourth gen Dodge, you know, ten to sixteen. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you buy the truck. That, that's a hefty pill to swallow right off the bat. Um, you could do an intake if you wanted. You can do a DPF back exhaust if you wanted. Bank for your buck, is it there? Absolutely not. You're not really going to see those gains, but you can tune the truck and be right around 450 rear wheel horsepower, uh, which is 50 horse more than. Than a, the third gen, the older okay. truck, you know. So you, you gained fifty horse you, with an extra thirty thousand dollars in budget. Yeah, correct. But you're also in a, a plushier interior, okay, a nicer is. looking truck. It's they easier have on finally the eye. updated them. They have finally updated them for real. I uh, talk about it all the time. I, I love the new <laughs> leather dash. The, the, yeah. You know, nice seats. The, you the know, interior, they, the exterior. They hit a home run beautiful. on it. Totally, it's definitely nice. Um, and then you can do a simple valve body modification and add transmission tuning to that 68 RFE if you did choose an automatic six-speed. And we can get 530 horse out of that truck very respectfully. So now you're talking a $300 valve body modification. You're talking you know, $800 in tuning, and you're at 530 horse. That took the older 5.9 truck, a $5,000 trans you know, $800 in tuning and intake and an exhaust and a potential lift bump. Right. So the bang for your bucket's there. I mean, I hear you. I mean, if you're in a new Cummins, I see that stage one being very appealing. I mean, and yeah, if, if you had the money to, to drop on the truck or you had the, the financing in line to get a loan for the truck, you're probably going to have $1,000 this spring on the valve body and the tuning. I, right. I, I'm just I'm just assuming here, but it, it's usually doable. Yeah. No, I, I, think that's, I think that's pretty reasonable. What about 6.7s making big power? Is anybody out there using... I mean, I assume a deleted 6.7 still has all the capacity a five, nine wood. a 5 9 wood with more volume. Therefore, I would imagine in a long-term approach, more capacity for power. I mean, the the 6.7 trucks, when deleted, you know, uh, to take a step back real quick, with the emission compliant stuff, it's still really new. So getting the high horsepower DPF equipped trucks, it's going to take some time. Yeah, I mean, no, there? nobody's making a th- – right. I, I know for a fact nobody's I mean, made seven or 800 no, horsepower on emissions. Is it there? Yes. Right. You know, Nick over at Duramax Tuner, he proved a lot of people wrong with a 640-horse twin-turbo LML with all the emissions equipment on it. And that was stock emissions equipment, what, three, four years ago now. Right. So the Dodges, is it? do they have it? Is it going to be coming? I do believe it, but it's going to take time. Yeah. Going the delete route, are there 1,000-horse 6, 7 trucks? Yeah, there is. There's 1,000, 1,100-horse 6, 7 trucks. What are they doing? What, I mean, what are we talking about? You can get away with a bigger single at that point, and that's – the, the poison that those guys generally, uh, they pick their poison and go that direction. Right. Big S480s, S475s, the added displacement of the motor, it's really going to help drive that turbocharger to come to boost a little nicer, uh, a little bit more friendlier than the 5.9 would. Okay. Um, so a lot of guys are going that route. Some guys are doing twins. So I guess it really depends on what route those guys are looking to go. Right. Um, same injectors apply, injection pumps apply, modifications of the valve springs, push rods, head studs, uh, coolant bypass, everything still pretty much is set in their ways. Like you need that those components. Yeah. Um, the 68 RFE, the trans, the automatic six speed, uh, at 800, 900. Rear wheel horse, thousand rear wheel horse. Uh, they're they're not there. I was gonna say I don't I don't know of anybody holding that type of horsepower. So Six or seven hundred horsepower on a build. And maybe you've had a couple transmissions in the truck. Yeah. Um. So when you're talking the the thousand horsepower trucks, they either have the older forty seven re or forty eight re transmissions converted, or they're six speed manual trans trucks at that point. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean they're. They're I mean, a the six seven. With. I, I've seen the six sevens just dominating in some of the sled pull markets throughout yeah. the country. I mean, you're getting into now. You're you're getting guys that do hybrid hybrid Cummins engines. Oh yeah, six seven blocks, P pump. You know, with twelve valve heads. I mean, you're you're seeing that stuff. It's there. It guys are doing it. Yeah. Um, you know. Some guys will beg to differ that that's not the best route to go, but some guys, you know, you have those innovators. You have those guys that really want to test their waters. You, you know, I feel like when when you add up a formula of wild ambition 
probably too much time on their hands, set in their ways. And a deep pocketbook. And a deep pocketbook. <laughs> you come up with shit like what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Not not to say that it's wrong. I mean, I think it's badass that somebody is out there in engineering and developing and testing and trying something that's new, something that nobody else has done. And, and I do love that the Cummins platform offers that pretty simple. To be honest with you, if you're a do-it-at-home mechanic, Cummins, I even have a real strong leaning to suggesting a Cummins to anybody new to diesel. I, that's, I mean, and that's how I got into it. You know, I was in high school, my senior year shop class, we had a 24 valve generator motor. Uh, and that's what I used. That, that was my senior project. I had to disassemble and reassemble that engine. When I graduated, I sold my car. I, uh, I had my Ford at that time. I sold the Ford and I bought a Dodge. Uh, with a Cummins in it, that that was why I didn't have a lot of tools. I'm not a my, I'm not a mechanic by any means. Right. But you know, you have a couple. Uh, you have a 30 piece tool set, and you could pretty much work on the engine bay of a Cummins <laughs> at that point. So six wires. Yes, yeah, on a 12 valve, I don't even think there's that many. So <laughs> you know, it's definitely there. And you know, for the do-it-yourself guy at home, uh, they would appreciate being recommended to go the Dodge route. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't have the hefty shop bills. You know, you don't have to pay them, uh, pay a shop to do the, the smaller modifications or, or the upkeep on them. Yeah, and I think there's a ton of support out there for them as well. Oh, um, I mean, go on, go on any of the forums. There are a million self-proclaimed experts that when you decipher through a lot of the info, there is some quality stuff there. I think even nowadays the Facebook groups are getting to be so popular that even if you're not getting onto the older style Cummins Forum and uh, Diesel Bombers and places like that, I think there's just about every state, if not every major city, has its own Diesel Forum on Facebook that's very easy, very quick responses. As, as any public forum, there's usually more opinions than facts. Mm-hmm. However, like you said, if you're looking for help or if you're learning how to do something, those are great places to go to get that immediate recognition. I would say a year ago, if we talked about that, I wouldn't agree as much. But it seems like in the last year, every time you turn around, there's new diesel Facebook pages popping yeah. up. And like you said, not even states. It's now cities. Oh, yeah. You know, it's definitely becoming uh, more and more normal to see all those types of Facebook pages pop up. Um, you know, different groups and even all the forums are now converting over to Facebook to have their forum pages on Facebook. Yep. So there's a lot of really, really good information. I mean, even going as far as um, different power recipes or seeing different builds and, you know, display of pictures, you can find all that just by hopping on Facebook and doing a little research on your own. So. Absolutely. Well, Chris Emke, thank you very much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. I think you brought a lot of value to our listeners. Uh, we're definitely going to have you back in the future to talk more about Cummins Power. I, uh, I appreciate it, and you know, thank you for having me. Man, there it is, too, with Chris Emke. Always just a ton of good information about the entire range of Cummins Motors. Um, I think he had some really great takeaways, Danny, but I know <laughs> there's one that hit home with you because I've heard you say it before. Yeah, you know, my, my favorite line is, you buy a 5.9 or 6.7, and the Dodge comes with it for free. That's it. You're, you're buying the motor. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what we all want is we want that, that Cummins power plant making power, being reliable, being capable of so much, and driving so smoothly as long as you're okay with the noise. Um, but that's a preference thing. You know, I think Cummins guys love the noise. I think Ford guys want to hear the whistle. You know, we all have our little niche, but uh, Chris Emke definitely brought a ton of great information today to the podcast. Absolutely. Not many guys say uh, they drive a Dodge. They say they drive a Cummins. (laughs) Excellent. Well, thank you very much for listening, folks. We'll see you again next week. The Diesel Performance Podcast is brought to you by Calibrated Power Solutions, home of DuramaxTuner.com, developer of performance engine and transmission calibrations for a wide variety of late model diesel powertrains, including the Duramax, Cummins, John Deere, Jeep, and many more. For more information and the best customer service in the industry, check out CalibratedPower.com or call 815-568-7920.